Previously on Smart Mobility Today, we focused on power, AV emissions, cooling the earth with moon dust, drone technology in Ukraine, and melting robots. This week's show includes lots of news about EVs, charging, the environment, as well as research news, more about robots and drones, and the health impact of smart home technology. You've got something to say, and we can help you say it. Detroit Media Productions is here for your audio, photography, and video needs. DetroitMediaProductions.com Hi, this is Cindy Polakowski. Joe Biden, the self-proclaimed car guy president, has put a lot of importance on new EV infrastructure as part of his economic plan. An article in Fortune suggests that his EV push is starting to pay off as more manufacturers decide to build electric cars in the U.S., thanks in part to state and federal tax breaks. In addition, as part of Biden's economic plan, $7.5 billion will be invested in an extensive national network of EV charges, as well as U.S.-based EV manufacturing. The most recent evidence of positive progress is Toyota announcing the upcoming production of EVs in a Kentucky factory beginning in 2025. The company will use batteries it makes in North Carolina to manufacture EVs in Kentucky. Toyota hopes to produce about 10,000 electric SUVs a month by the end of 2025 and 200,000 EVs annually in the U.S. starting in 2026. In EV-related environmental news, Bloomberg reports that at least a billion tons of emissions could be eliminated as battery electric vehicles, BEVs, make up 80% of China's new car sales and 34% of its total fleet by 2040. That amount is equal to all of the CO2 emissions in Japan in the year 2020. The prediction is based on some assumptions, like an average 15-year lifespan for internal combustion engines versus 8 for BEVs. And the per-EV 40% reductions in emissions assumes that coal will continue to make up 56% of China's power generation. The emissions saving from BEVs could be even higher if China's mix of renewable versus non-renewable energy sources changes over time to a more renewable energy. Of course, not all of the news about EVs is good. EV maker Lucid announced fourth quarter revenue that was lower than expectations. The company made only 7,000 of its luxury sedans in 2022, citing manufacturing challenges. Lucid said it plans to make between 10 and 14,000 vehicles this year. Shares of the company stock dropped 7% the day of the earnings report. Three years ago, John Doran said that his Valeti Falls hydropower plant would someday provide the power needed to charge his company's fleet of EVs. Today, Plug-In Stations Online, the East Coast installer and distributor of EV charging equipment, says that it has successfully installed, quote, one of the world's first hydro-powered EV chargers. The system operating off of 100% clean energy is being used to demonstrate the possibility for a clean future based on hydropower. The company, whose website announces the revolution is electric, has partnerships with several EV charging manufacturers like ChargePoint, ABB, and Shell Recharge. Looking for better ways to manage your IT, phone systems, or remote workforce? Improve your organization using technology that works for you. PSNTechnology.com At the University of Michigan in 2016, the Center for Connected and Automated Transportation was established thanks to a $15.76 million six-year grant. CCAT is one of 10 regional U.S. Department of Transportation centers nationwide. Over the years, the center has created an augmented reality testing environment to help train autonomous vehicles on how to respond to dangerous traffic incidents. The center has used AI and human intelligence to create backup systems for AVs and has worked on connecting automated freight trucks in an effort to reduce traffic delays and wear and tear on the roads. This week, U of M was awarded a new U.S. Department of Transportation $15 million five-year grant focused on transitioning the United States to connected and automated vehicles. The federal government provides such grants to nine collaborating colleges and universities, where technology and workforce training are developed with a focus on the future of mobility. 
At MIT, researchers have constructed a mini city where they can test algorithms for self-driving cars. This smaller environment provides a safer place to test AV technologies before applying them to a full-size vehicle on real roads in real cities. Technologies like LiDAR, cameras, or any of the sensors that full-size vehicles need are tested on the smaller vehicles. The Mini City allows for multiple cars, letting researchers assess various new algorithms. The work can test the working of AVs, traffic lights, and the movement of humans in a safe way. And one more research story. At Microsoft, they are working to find out if chat GPT can think and reason about the physical world. If it can, it might help with robotics tasks. So if chat GPT can be used to instruct robots by people who do not know programming languages or understand robotic systems, then can it essentially function as a go-between for humans and robots and in the process generate code needed for robot development? We will be right back. Michigan leads in technology-driven innovation. See how at mytechnews.com, mitechnews.com. LG blooms in lakes are a major environmental problem, producing extremely dangerous toxins that can harm other organic life. To address this problem, biologists collect water samples in a time-consuming and inefficient process. LG blooms can spring up anywhere, and finding optimal sites to sample is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Recently, computer scientists have started working with biologists in developing autonomous robots capable of finding prime sample spot locations for toxic algae. Rather than creating a map of an area by exploring it indiscriminately, robots can hone in on the ideal sampling locations and eliminate the need for biologists to make the multiple trips needed to figure out where the algae blooms might be. This collaboration between science disciplines that don't often work together seem to be paying off. For the biologists, evaluating bodies of water is extremely labor-intensive, and saving time and effort is a great thing. For the computer scientists, working with a field like biology offers opportunities, like solving environmental problems by applying computer science and robotics. In 2020, Amazon received conditional approval from the FCC for its Project Kuiper, a proposed constellation of satellites. Since that time, the company has had to satisfy a number of conditions set by the FCC related to space debris, including plans to address issues of collision risk, post-mission disposal reliability, completion of satellite design, and orbital separation. On February 8th, Amazon was granted permission to begin construction of its constellation of 3,236 satellites. The FCC, the country's main telecommunications service regulator, published a statement that read, Our action will allow Kuiper to begin deployment of its constellation in order to bring high-speed broadband connectivity to customers around the world. IoT for years has driven smart home technology. According to Forbes, the technology is now becoming a factor in determining what is a great home and what is a sound home investment. Examples of these attributes, monitoring the environment, detecting security issues, and monitoring occupant health. A Deloitte survey reveals that today's smart homes can blend up to 25 devices contributing more than envisioned by the use cases of the individual smart devices. The autonomous occupant health monitoring might be the most interesting concept. Such functions may include environmental conditions, blackout curtains designed to block pollution and help fix circadian rhythms, refrigerators that use machine learning to track when foods go bad and prevent waste, or a bath mat that can monitor your weight and posture. 
Read these stories and more at globalautomobility.com and subscribe to Smart Mobility today on your favorite podcast platform. Sign up to receive our weekly newsletter and follow us on social media at Smart Mobility Today. Produced by Detroit Media Productions, this is Smart Mobility Today.